In a previous tutorial, we talked about incremental refresh for Power BI data flows, how to set them up, the benefits they bring to your BI solutions, and their limitations. One of the most significant limitations is that incremental refresh is a premium-only feature, which can be a significant barrier for many organizations. But what if I told you that instead of focusing on incremental data refresh, we can shift our attention to incremental data management using Power Automate, achieving something very similar, and it's a much cheaper option to implement. If you are ready to hear more about it, let's get started. Hello and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and I'm here to guide you through the world of data, analytics and automation. If this is your first time around here, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons so you won't miss any of my tutorials. It means a lot to me and helps others to find content like this. Well, I'm not going to dive into the theory behind incremental refresh or how to set it up because I've already covered that in a previous tutorial. If you haven't seen it, make sure to add it to your watch list. Today's focus is all about achieving something similar, very similar, without spending a large amount of money on premium license or capacity. For this demo, I'm going to rely on data stored in SharePoint as Excel files. The reason for this is relatively simple. If your company has a fully fledged IT department, they can create SQL views for the reports that you are developing. However, if there is no central team to help you with data storage and cleansing, you'll likely work on your own with the tools you have at your disposal. I've seen so many insightful and business critical reports developed by the business teams, mainly analysts, so I've got no issue with that setup. But I digress. Today's objective is to create an automation that helps with automatic data management based on a date filter, similar to how incremental refresh in Power BI defines time periods. But enough of me, let's head over to my machine and start by exploring the setup many of you might already have. Here we are on Bilingual Analytics Citizen Developer Data Warehouse, called Data Management. Some might call it a SharePoint site. Let's assume this is a central location where data is saved before you go through the full transformation process. Under documents, there are two folders, one called archive and another one called data. Inside the data folder, we have nine files, each representing one day's worth of information. I've also created a calculated column called incremental date here. Essentially, it's used as a modified or created date, but since I can't travel in time, I had to create this manually. As I mentioned, don't get distracted by this column. In your setup, it could be a creation date or modified date column that we will use later. I just needed files with a date field where I can adjust the exact date. So the three options we will cover today follow the same pattern we covered with incremental refresh. Storing data, or I should rather say data files, from the past one year, four quarters and 12 months. Our task in Power Automate will be identifying a start or minimum date based on the current incremental data management option and any files older than that will be moved to a different folder. Let's get going. Let's tackle the one year option first. Remember, in Dataflow's incremental refresh option, it means going back to the first day of last year. As I'm recording this video at the end of September 2024, I need to identify the 1st of January 2023. While I'm going to create a step-by-step -step guide on how to arrive at this single date, you can combine these steps into a single calculation. We will start by manually triggering a flow, but in your setup it could be either an automated or a scheduled flow based on how you acquire data. The second step is to identify today's date. For that, I initialize a variable called today's date. The variable name will be today and its type will be string. Once that's defined, I can click on the expression sign for the value and search for UTC now. Next, I would like to find the first day of the month from today's date. I start by initializing a new variable called start of month. The name should be start date, and it's also a string type of data. I click on the expression sign again and search for a formula called start of month. 
Now I bring in the first variable and we should be good to go. Let's save and test this flow quickly. Great, now we have today's date and the first day of September available. The next step will be identifying how many months have passed since the 1st of January of the current year. For that I'll add another variable called number of month. This time the number of month variable should be an integer. Here we will use a little trick to get that number. First we need to format the start date variable with the format datetime function as month or mm. Then we wrap it into an integer formula to ensure we have an integer. This calculation should give us the number 9. Let's test it. However, I know that in the next step I want to define the first day of the year, so instead of keeping this number of month variable as 9, let's subtract 1 from it. We can do that by utilizing the sub function and putting the number 1 at the end. And just like that we can move to the next step. Now let's identify the first day of the year. Again we initialize a new variable, calling it first day of year. Since this is a date, we will use a string data type. The expression that goes into the value is going to be subtract from time. We will use the start date variable as the first argument, the timestamp. Then we will use the number of month variable as the second argument. And lastly, type in month to define that we want to go back a certain number of months from the start date. Let's run another save and test before we proceed. Perfect, now we have the 1st of January 2024 available. Now we just need to go back one year. And as you probably already guessed it, our last variable will be first day of last year. Another string using a very similar subtract from time function, starting from first day of the year and subtracting one year. Alright, so we have the first part of the automation ready and I can tell you it was the more difficult part. Coming up with a calculation that would yield the same minimum date information we've seen in the incremental refresh option. Now we just need to find a way to move files from our data folder that have a date less than the first day of last year. Back to Power Automate. As I mentioned you can combine all these variables into a single one. Let me show you what I mean by that. Allow me to add the parallel branch here at the top and initialize a variable. Let's call this one step. And allow me to paste all the calculations we carried out on the left hand side into this one. This is exactly the same logic, just combined into a single variable. Personally, I recommend keeping the calculations separate. It makes your life easier when tweaking or troubleshooting if needed. But that's just my two cents. Next, we need to add the SharePoint action namely the get files properties only action. Selecting our SharePoint site and the documents library will allow us to start working with the advanced options. First we will filter this action to files located in the data folder which can be done by selecting the folder under the limit entries to folder option. Secondly we will filter which files we want to get the details or properties for by utilizing the filter query option. This is where we will use the incremental date calculated column from SharePoint. All we need to add here is incremental date LE and use the incremental date variable in single quotation marks. In this example, LE means less than or equal to. If you are interested in other operators, pause the video now as I add all available options to the screen. Alright, back to the video. This step will identify all files in the folder that we don't want to include in our incremental data management policy. Finally, we will add a move file SharePoint action. Select the data management site. Use the identifier dynamic content from the previous step. 
This will also add a for each action to our flow. Lastly, select the destination site and folder and specify what should happen when a file with the same name already exists. What do you think? Are you ready to test this flow? Now, just as a reminder, we have nine files in our folder and two of them were created before the 1st of January 2023. I expect that the files from the 30th of December 2022 and 9th of October 2022 will be moved to the archive folder once we test the flow. Let's do it. I feel great about this. Alright, so our flow ran and you can see it indicates two files here. But let's head over to SharePoint. Now, we only have seven files in the data folder, and if we check the archive folder, we can see the two older files have been moved here. Let me pause here for a second before we jump into the quarterly and monthly setups. With Power Automate, we've managed to define a flow that can automatically clean up a SharePoint folder based on the day. And why is that great? Well, Imagine having daily CSS extracts coming from multiple systems saved to the same folder with a long set of historical data files. Every time you refresh a Power BI report that utilizes that folder, you will need to bring the data in first and then filter out the bits you don't need. By incrementally managing underlying data, you can speed up the refresh process by limiting the import to the data subfolder and the time period you want to report on. How good is that? I'll also share some more tips and tricks after we covered the other two options, quarters and months, so make sure to stay till the end. Back to Power Automate. Let's tackle the monthly setup next, as it will be much simpler. We start with the same steps, defining UTC now as today's date, and then going back to the start of the month. However, after that, all I need to do is hardcode the number of month variable given that in this setup we want to store data from the last 12 months. This reduces the number of steps to just one more. Now I'll add the subtract from time function with the start date as the timestamp, number of dates as the intervals, and month as the unit. Once it's complete, I can combine all of this into one step again. And then the SharePoint actions are going to remain the same. I moved all nine files back to the data folder, so now I expect that when we test the monthly data management flow, it will move six files from the data folder to the archive folder. Let's test it out. Amazing! And we've left the most difficult for last, the quarterly setup. While it follows the same pattern, the logic and the available functions are a bit more complex. However, after some testing, I found a way to get it working. Thanks to my Excel background. Let me show you my solution. Again, we start with the same two steps, today's date and start of month. Next, we need to define how many months we need to go back to reach the first day of the quarter. To achieve this, I replicated the solution some of you might be familiar with from Excel. Column A represents the months as integers. Column B represents the first month number in the quarter. And column C represents how many months we need to go back from the month number to the first month number in the quarter. The formula I used is called MOD or MOD, which gives us the remainder once a number has been divided by the divisor. The good news is, this mod function is also available in Power Automate. Once we have this, we can calculate the first day of the quarter with a subtract from time function. Lastly, we use another subtract from time to go back one year from the first day of the quarter in question.
We can also drag and drop those get files and move files actions in Power Automate. Just make sure that you update the variable that you use in the filter query. As this date is going to be the 1st of July 2023, this flow will move four files from the data folder to the archive folder. <laughs> Works like a charm. With these calculations and file movements, we've managed to achieve a similar setup to what we had with the incremental refresh policy options for data flows. We can now define time periods or ranges that will automatically update based on today's date and move out data files that no longer fall into that period. As I said at the beginning of this video, it's all about incremental data management. While this might not bring you the same level of refresh speed gains as using incremental refresh, where you're only updating the last few days worth of data, it can still give you better refresh reliability. Imagine how much time you could save by not needing to move files manually or importing all files and then filtering based on the defined period in Power Query. It's always quicker to pre-filter the data than load everything into Power BI rather than filter afterwards. There are other steps you can take to further speed up data flow refreshes, depending on how complex your scenario is. What do I mean by that? Well, in the yearly setup, you can create a data flow for previous years and another data flow for the current year's data. This way, you won't need to refresh 2023 or previous year's data flows every day. You can also set up a Power Automate flow to refresh the historical data flow on the first day of the new year, fully automating the refresh process. It might be a bit trickier with the monthly setup, but there are ways to further improve the speed of data flow refreshes using Power Automate and this incremental data management approach. With that said, I would love to hear from you. What do you think of this solution? Is it something you would implement in your setup to speed up data flow refreshes? Let me know in the comments below, along with any questions or feedback you might have. I try my best to answer them as quickly as possible. Thanks for staying till the end. I hope you learned something new today. If that's the case, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Also, check out these tutorials to take your data, analytics and automation journey to the next level. Until the next one, see ya.